Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm excited to show you this game from the League Championship. So it is a double elimination tournament. I am in the loser's bracket right now playing Strider 656. Shout out to Strider 656 who has also has a YouTube channel and has been a staunch supporter of this channel. So I'm very excited to get to show you this game. And he actually did a live play video of this game. And so this is my take and analysis of this game. So I allocated one eye and uh, rolled one more and then got this very nice starting roll. And I think these are really nice cards to start off with. Warm with Sorrow and Toil, New Powers Rising. Oh, I should mention that we did bid for side. I bid two tokens and he accepted. Though he did say he would accept, he would have accepted zero tokens. So I guess he really wanted to play free people. And he got Rajas Theoden and Athalas. So these are also very nice cards to start with. And he got this roll that would allow him to crown Aragorn turn one if he gave me a ring. So I did not choose to play Worn with Sorrow and Toil right away because I was worried that if I did, he would crown Aragorn and then declare in Rivendell at the start of round two. And then I would have completely wasted Worn with Sorrow and Toil. So I wait for him to move once before playing it and anticipate that he probably won't get, I probably won't get hit on the first time. And if I do, so be it. All right. So he starts by passing. I uh, muster Isengard to war and then he moves and I get two sixes, really hot hunt and get a three. So um, obviously it's, you know, good to hit the fellowship, but also getting a three this early with Gandalf with Will of the West showing this is actually going to delay me getting Saruman because he has two tokens. So, um, and I have new powers rising, which I would have been happy to play. So it's actually a very interesting situation. Um, I I'm happy. i overall, I'm still net happy to get the hit, but, but that is, I think in some ways a good result for free people as well. So I now play Warren with sorrow and toil and what else is he going to do? He plays Riders of Theoden. I think that makes a lot of sense. And nice to play it in, in Edoras first and then move to Westamnet later. I move armies from Baradur to Gorgoroth. And now he musters the elves towards war once, which I think is great because now I'm not going to be able to get Saruman. I move arm. I, I'm not going to be able to get Saruman unless I'm willing to give him Gandalf because he's going to get the last action for the round. So... I move armies from uh, Gorgoroth to Mornon, uh, North Dunland to Moria, and I'm just going to continue with my plan of attacking the elves. He moves a second time. This time is safe. And then I muster the Sauron to war because I'm not going to get Saruman in exchange for Gandalf. That's just not a good trade because I give up, you know, I I'm very likely to be able to get another muster to roll another muster next round. And he is only 50% chance of rolling a will of the West next round. So I'd rather delay Gandalf effectively two turns in exchange for delaying Saruman, you know, or probably one turn or like 1.1 turns or something like that. So um, he, what does he do with this last? He, so he doesn't move again with that will of the West. I'm, I don't know, with Athelos in hand, I might have been tempted to move again, knowing that if I take some corruption, it doesn't matter. But using this as an army army movement is pretty efficient to get this really nice army to Westamnet and to take uh, a north unit to Old Forest Road. So, okay. He draws Elven Rope in the last battle. Last battle, probably not going to be played for the card effect, but useful for the combat effect. And I get Balrog, which I'm happy to see I'm more likely to use it as a combat effect, but depending on how things go, if he declares into Moria and I might be tempted to, if he gets revealed into Moria, I might be tempted to play it as a card effect. So it's, it's nice to see that early. And Orcs Multiplying again is great too. So I have a lot of useful cards here. I get another beautiful roll and he gets another beautiful roll. So this is going to let him get Aragorn if he wants. But also it means that he rolled another Will of the West and I'm going to be faced with this similar dilemma with what to do about Saruman, assuming he uses uh, uh, this action token 
and um and and then makes me take the last action. And by the way, I, I think he was probably telling the truth that he would have taken free people for fewer tokens. But if it if it was a bluff or if it was just mind games, like I'm so I, I'm like really feeling the pain of these tokens this game because he's delaying Saruman by using the tokens. All right. So I get my armies moving. He moves the fellowship and is missed. I uh, move armies and get pre basically prepared to attack the elves. He moves and is hit again, but is not revealed. So he just takes two corruption, and that's going to be fine with him. I'm going to try and remember Warren with Sorrow and Toil, but he's just taking corruption. I move armies along, and then he musters the elves towards war, and I move my army into Dimrald Dale, and then he draws a card, which was Thranduil's Archers. What a card draw. That's great. And uh, now I have the same, exactly the same dilemma again. Do I get Saruman? Do I delay Saruman by 1.1 or 1.2 turns in exchange for delaying Gandalf two turns? I make the same choice. I'm going to delay Gandalf two turns in exchange for delaying Saruman a little more than one turn. So I just move my armies. And then he moves the Fellowship for a third time. And um, I do hit him, but I don't reveal him. So three tiles, no reveal is relatively unlikely. Uh, shall we calculate it? I think we shall. So the initial hit, if, you, if you're going to hit the fellowship three times, what are the chances that they are not revealed after three hits? And the answer is the chances of not getting hit on the first tile is seven out of 16 times the next tile, which is 6 out of 16, times the next tile, which is 5 out of 15. So that's only a 5% chance. So 5% chance of not getting revealed if you get hit three times. So um, interesting situation. He has five movement, and he's pretty happy with Athalas and Elven Rope. So he's just going to take the Corruption. And uh, I'm still only rolling seven dice, and he declares into Lorien, which is, I think, a, like a really nice play. You get rid of Warren with Sauron Toil. You're doing okay um, fellowship-wise in terms of progress, and the um, Shadow only is rolling seven dice right now. So I, I think it's I think that's a pretty reasonable play. Um, so one eye gets allocated, and then I roll three more, and then he rolls another Will of the West. So he's rolled a Will of the West every round of the game so far, and what's particularly ironic about this is because I rolled three extra eyes, he's going to get to take the last action again because I just don't have enough dice. So he plays Athalas here, and I think that makes sense. Um... It's interesting because he could play I will go alone. One, two, three, four. He could play I will go alone to Minas Tirith here. It's a little sad to play I will go alone without having first played Athalos. But if your plan is to play I will go alone and then use the Will of the West to crown Aragorn, Maybe you're okay with that, and you've just healed two. Effectively, one from declaring in Lorien and one from the I will go alone. I don't know. Would you play Athalos here with the character, with the with the character die? I mean, there are four eyes, so not not moving is is reasonable. So, he only gets one healing. You know, expected two, but one is still something. And now um, I, I have some tough choices here. I only have two dice. and I mean, um, three dice, two attacks. So I would love to get to the elves before they muster up. And he can muster quite a bit with the elves before I get there. All right. So um, I attack Old Forest Road. Fortunately, he does not have scouts yet. And at least my thinking is, okay, I can be prepared to attack um, Woodland Realm. I'll let him, if he wants to power up in Lorien and muster a bunch, that's okay. 
Um, I have Balrog and probably could eventually take it out anyway. And I drew Ulog High, so there's some options here. Um, he plays Thrandall's Archers, which is interesting to me. I, I wonder if it's better to just outright muster the Elves to War. I That does turn on the Witch King, but quite honestly, you're waiting to play Gandalf anyway. So I think my plan here was if he musters the elves to war, then I will use these, these two musters to get the Witch King and Saruman because that way I'm able to get two minions for, for one uh, for one Gandalf die, and that would be worth it. Um, but he instead just plays Thrandall's archers, so the elves are still not at war. And I'm thinking about Saruman, but again, I'm faced with the same sort of dilemma which is I don't I just don't want to give him one um I don't want to give him Gandalf in two turns when otherwise I, I could get Saruman next turn. So um I muster the Southrons and Easterlings to war. Maybe that's slightly the wrong order. I think what I was worried about is if he musters the elves to war, then I want to be able to attack immediately with this with this die. Um, but then, then when he uses, when he does this action, he plays, I will go alone using a ring to crown Strider. And, um, and I, I think that's pretty cool when I, I wasn't expecting that. And when I see that play, I think to myself, well, now he's getting, a, an extra die anyway, so I might as well get my extra die. Um, because I don't want to, de I, I don't want to wait that long. So, so I think in the end, I decide to get Saruman and then he thinks about what should I get Gandalf or Aragorn. He ends up getting Aragorn, which I think makes sense. He doesn't have Ents right now. And if he needs to retreat away with Aragorn or play dead men or do other things with him, it, it frees Aragorn up to move and Gandalf can show up at any time. It is nice for me to have gotten the ring. Um, and the fellowship didn't move. So, I don't know. I, I'm I'm not totally convinced on that play. It's hard to know, but turn three Aragorn is pretty nice. And healing. And now the fellowship is fully healed. They're down to zero corruption. So they went from four to zero. I mean, that was a pretty, pretty nice heal. And five dice. So um I have a really tough discarding situation here. What would you discard? I have a lot of great cards. Um so I ended up discarding Orcs Multiplying again. I don't love leaving these strongholds entirely empty, and I'm worried that the Elves are going to muster up a bunch, but uh, I have to discard something. So that's that's my choice. Curious to know. I, I confirmed the Fellowship did not move. It is a little risky, but because I know that he wants to get Gandalf, I think that it's okay to risk no eyes anticipating that if he gets a Will of the West, he's not going to use that to move. He's going to use it to play Gandalf. So I allocate no eyes and um, roll one. And he gets three movement, no Gandalf. So on one hand, I don't like seeing the three movement. On the other hand, I'm happy to see no Gandalf. And my plan is to, uh, you know, be able to play the day without dawn at some point. Um, and that could that could be pretty cool. And also I want to attack into Lorien so that I can put the elves to war and then be on top of the fellowship so that so I get rerolls on the hunt. So this is this is looking like a pretty nice turn to me, and I'm glad he finally did not roll a Will of the West. Um and then he plays Mirror of Galadriel, which I love. So so that's really cool. Um he had healed so much already that he actually wastes the healing from Mirror of Galadriel. He's in Lorien, um, but he wastes it. And it's totally correct to play it here without waiting, because if I had mustered the Southrons and Easterlings to war, I would have been able to um I would have been able to uh, play Day Without Dawn. So, so that was a great play on his part. He's going to be able to move twice. He's going to be able to get Gandalf, and he's going to be able to muster the elves if I, whenever I attack the elves. So, so that's pretty. That's pretty sweet. Um, 
Now, what do you do as Shadow? I have six attacks, and I'm going to use this mustard to get the, the Witch King. So, because Day Without Dawn is not really a viable plan at this point, so it's not worth mustering the Southrons and Easterlings again. So, so what do you do here? Um, my thinking is I'm willing to let uh, Lorien muster up a little bit, and... Um, Yeah, and I think I wanted to take out the north because I don't know why. So I move the north to war and I get Umbar ready. I, you know, looking at this now, I'm like, why did I do this? Why didn't I just attack into... Why didn't I just attack into Woodland Realm and attack into Lorien and just win those battles? I don't know why I'm putting I'm putting the north to war here. I guess I'm thinking I can put the north to war this way with two attacks. And then I can still get the Witch King. And then if I draw into Corsairs, I can do Corsairs before the elves are even at war. I don't know. This is this is a weird line of play. I'm not sure why I'm doing this. Okay, I think that's just a mistake. All right, so he gets Gandalf now, shows up in Fangorn, and then I attack Dale. And I don't, he still doesn't have scouts. So I'm hoping to just roll a six, and I roll a six. So that's good. I mean, this is the best possible outcome for this whole plan. Um, and then the fellowship moves and is safe. And now I think about attacking Lorien. But. Because I want to get the re-roll on the Fellowship. But I'm also... I don't know what. What am I thinking here? So I attack Erebor. Right, right, right. So why did he not use... Right, so I guess I wanted to... Right, I'm remembering now. So I wanted to get to Dale, threaten to put Erebor under siege so that he would feel compelled to use this army muster to move from Iron Hills into Erebor and from maybe West of Men to Helm's Deep or whatever. And then I could besiege both Elven strongholds before he got to use, before he got to muster them at all. So, so that's what I was thinking. And now that he hasn't moved into Erebor, uh, my thinking is, well, maybe he has Dane. And I'm not excited about that, but if he does have Dane, I can then backtrack and still attack, still attack the Elven stronghold. So I attack Erebor, and I leave one behind in Dale so that when the elves inevitably go to war, they can't just walk into Dale. It's a little weird. Um, I'm putting the dwarves to war. I muster the Witch King here, and I'm thinking, well, if he has Dane, like, now is the time to play it. And he's still not playing it. So um, now I attack into Iron Hills because... I don't want to take out Erebor before um, I've taken care of Iron Hills. Because if I do that, then he can start mustering in Iron Hills. And I don't have extra attacks. And it could be kind of a mess. And then he could just muster a bunch in there pretty relatively quickly. And it could be a pain in the neck. It's not like I have a huge force here. So I take out Iron Hills first. All of these combats are going the best I could possibly hope for. But now I'm down to... Um, eight hit points here. And then he moves again. And this time I hit him and he gets revealed. So the hunt is going very well for me. I didn't even besiege Lorien and I'm still getting hit. And he gets revealed in Western Brownland. And now I try and finish off Erebor before he draws Dane because clearly he doesn't have, he doesn't have Dane. So I might as well try and finish him off. And I, what would you play here? Would you play a combat card? If so, what would you play? Um, I play New Powers Rising, I mean, b with the Great Host effect, because my thinking is um, I can probably get, um, I, I probably won't take three hits, and that way I'm going to get an automatic hit. I don't love using up New Powers Rising as a combat effect, but he's mustered in Rohan relatively well. I think my plan is... Take out Dew, take out Lorien. Dew is Dale Erebor. 
uh, Woodland Realm. So take out these five points up north, take out Lorien, and then somehow get two points in, in Gondor. I guess that's what I'm thinking. Um, I don't know. I don't know about this play. So I get I get one hit against him, which is great, but he gets three hits against me. So by me taking three hits... Uh, I no longer have double the number of hit points as him and great host doesn't trigger. So this was, I think, probably the worst play of New Power is Rising that I've had in a really long time. I mean, this card is so good and I just threw it away in Erebor. I mean, it did it did use up a daylight of his and we shouldn't be too outcomes based. I think that was something like a somewhere between 10 and 20 percent chance that he gets three hits against me. But that's just, that's very sad. And now what am I going to do with this uh, character die? I don't know. Um, so he musters the elves towards war now, which makes total sense. And and now I besiege Lorien. So at least I get Lorien under siege before it's mustered up. But Woodland Realm is going to be able to muster up like crazy. So not the best military game for me. And now look at my hand. This is such a good hand. What would you what would you get rid of as as shadow maybe pause it or post what you would get rid of? And um, I get rid of King is revealed <clears throat> and on on they went. I obviously don't love discarding that red tile because that's a pretty nice red tile. And I think my plan was to use the character die last round to play it, but I needed to put Lorien under siege first. So I think this is the right play, but I don't I don't really know. I'd be really curious to know what you would have kept. All right, I allocate one eye and I roll no more. I'm happy with that. And um, <clears throat> they drew, they top decked Celeborn. So they got wood, they got Thrandal and they got Celeborn. And uh, that's that's quite nice for them. But they did only get here two, uh, two movement, which is below average. We'd expect three movement on six dice. And these Palantirs don't look too appealing to Shadow, but we know that I have lots of cards that I'm happy to play. I'm happy to play Hill Trolls, Ulukai, Ringwraiths are broad, possibly even Cruel Weather, depending how much progress they make. So um, he starts with Celeborn, which is great, redraws into Aomer, and um, <clears throat> I only have one muster, so I have to be a little careful of a military attack. I've, I've discarded... Uh, Orcs multiplying, so I don't have a good way to reinforce Dol Golder if they and Mori is relatively open. So this is kind of a dangerous situation for me. I don't think he's going that route, but I, I know he would consider it. So I get the South Rons to Easterlings um, to war with one muster. He hide. He thinks he hides with the will of the West, which I think is right in case I have Day Without Dawn, just to not tempt me. And then I start uh, powering up in Erebor to try and be able to take out Erebor. He musters in Woodland Realm. I power up Erebor some more. And um, <clears throat> and at this point, I draw a strategy card because I want to get to Corsairs. And I don't really have a good strategy card to play. I already have Cruel Weather in hand. So on one hand, yes, I could I could use it to play Ring Racer Abroad. Um I could maybe use to play Cruel Weather, but I just, I want to be cycling character cards. And I also, I mean, uh, strategy cards. And also I, I kind of don't have a great strategy card to play in this upcoming battle in Erebor. So I'm happy to have another card in hand to be able to play in the battle of Erebor. All right. So I go ahead and attack Erebor, try and finish it off. Deadly Strife. I get a total of three hits and uh, he gets two hits. So... I press, I redraw into Shadows Gather, which is very nice for me. I want to be able to reinforce and uh, take care of Woodland Realm. And uh, I don't play any card. He, uh, I get my hit and he gets one hit back at me. So at this point, um, I did manage to take out Erebor relatively quickly, though um, the Fellowship is making decent progress. I miss on that Fellowship movement. And I then muster into South Room because my thinking is I'm going to need a sizable army to take out Woodland Realm. I think it's still probably the most efficient uh, target for me to go for. But 
what would what, do you have other options of what you might go for? I mean, if I had uh, kept n- New Powers Rising, I could have potentially gone after Rohan. Um, or maybe Gondor is the right place to go. It's just not totally clear to me. So he reinforces Woodland Realm. It's now a, uh, no, he thinks about it. And instead he uses a ring to move a second time. So I'm happy to get his second ring. On uh, This time I had a one third chance of hitting him and I do hit him and I do reveal him. So this is sort of, um, you know, the, the, the payback for the good luck uh, of not getting revealed earlier in the game. Now he's getting revealed. So the luck does balance out. And I would say overall, my hunt luck has been pretty, probably a little above average, maybe even moderately above average. And um, he takes a random companion and uh, loses Gimli. That's fine. Um, you know, maybe he'd prefer to lose a Hobbit, but but this isn't this isn't bad. I play Ring Racer abroad to relocate to Lorien because I'd love to take out Lorien before I uh, before he plays uh, Power Too Great, and I also have cards burning a hole in my hand, and I have uh, Balrog, which I'm very happy to play against Lorien and uh, see how it goes. You know, I need more musters in, um, in South Rune probably before. Uh, joining up in in Woodland Realm. I don't love moving the Witch King away from the Theater of War where I I want it to be eventually anyway, but um, I wanted to have something productive to do with these these army movements. So um, I can use it potentially to attack Lorien a second time, depending on how this battle goes, or I can use it to get some some armies uh, a little more into position. So that's my thinking. Um, and, uh, I guess I get to put a Nazgul on the fellowship. So why not? All right. I play Balrog. They play sudden strike and do hit me for one, which can be nice. And then I get, um, two hits. So my Balrog did two. His leader did one. Fair enough. Um, and then I roll three sixes on nine dice, on 10 dice total. And uh, that's obviously pretty powerful. And he does get four hits back. So maximum hits back. That is substantial. I go down to um, the minimum that I could have and still be rolling. Uh, Anyway, I take the, I take the casualties. What else can I do? And um, he did five damage to me that round. So that's, that's quite good. And uh, I did five damage to him. Also quite good. So I'd redrawn to dreadful spells. And this is an example of the benefit of why having this one regular in um, in this army matters. Because it turns on the Devil of Orthanc card. I can cycle this character card. Not that it's a, you know, I, I would consider playing it at times. But I'm happy to cycle into other character cards. And also give some uncertainty about whether or not I have Cruel Weather. So... Maybe I'll be able to finish off Lorien with this. They, he musters um, Gondor one towards war to prepare for Corsairs. I attack Lorien and uh, manage to get my two sixes, and he gets two back. So that was a uh, successful uh, combat for me and Lorien, but he also did a bunch of damage to that army. And if he hadn't done a lot of damage to that army, I could definitely... Uh, play Shadows Gather, meet up in Fords of Aizen, and still have a decent army to take out Rohan. So it is good that he managed to dish out that much damage back. All right, we're on to round six. I draw the ring is mine. Threats and Promises not particularly useful to me. And um, I roll two more eyes, no character movement. And so that is the one drawback of using the uh, Ring Wraiths or Abroad as I did because now I can't move my Nazgul with a Palantir, um, and I didn't even roll any characters. So um, he got some... Uh, Mithrakotan's thing is nice, but then look at this roll. So he got two Wills of the West, again, slightly below average on movement, um, but then all these Palantirs, which is not exactly what he wants. He does actually have decent cards. Imrahil of Dolamroth, Elven Rope. He still has Horn of Gondor, which he could play. Um, Aomer... I wouldn't play Mithril Coat and Sting yet, but, um, and the reason why I wouldn't play Mithril Coat and Sting is because of the card Nazgul Strike, which could get rid of it. So, um, he hides and then I decide to play Day Without Dawn here. And, you know, on one hand you could save it particularly with, uh, with six dice. The 
free people may roll three Wills of the West at some point uh, over some number of rounds. But uh, stopping him from moving the Fellowship at all, unless he uses his last ring, um, felt uh, felt like it, it was worth it to me. So he plays. He proceeds to play Aomer. Um, Rohan is very nicely defended. I muster in South Rune. Muster again in South Rune. He plays Elven Rope. And um, then I play Shadows Gather. So this army has now merged up into Dale. One thing that I might have considered, and I wonder uh, in retrospect, maybe this was a misplay. I mustered this army in South Rune. Could I have come um, to from Minus Morgul into North Athelion and merge up that South Rune army in North Athelion? And then besiege uh, Minas Tirith with Aragorn inside it. And I'm I'm almost sure I could have done that with the dice that I had and the attacks that I had. I was pretty focused um, on Woodland Realm. And I think when I realized that play, it was a little too late in the round. But um, what do you think of that play? Would you have done it? On one hand, I don't love putting Gondor to war. And he would have been able to muster once in Minas Tirith. But on the other hand, taking out Aragorn could be good. And I think Aragorn with seven hit points isn't that different than Woodland Realm with nine hit points. I don't know that there's, there's probably, it's probably still harder to take out Aragorn, but um, that's something, that's something to consider. All right. So he musters in Woodland Realm, which is obviously correct. I bring up my max army into Dale and meet up in Minus Morgul, and then he plays uh, Emerald Hill Dol Amroth. So he's trying to balance military and um, fellowship. I might have been tempted to play Horn of Gondor because I, I have Boromir in the fellowship right now. Why not? Why not get that? Why not get that benefit? Um, was there really a rush to play Aomer? I don't know. Okay. Um... So I attack into Woodland Realm and uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm hoping to roll a character die uh, next round so that I can reposition my Nazgul. Um, Wizard Staff is not useful. Oh, right. Or Black Captain Commands. That's that's the other card that lets me move my Nazgul around. Uh, I allocate one eye. Oh, and I think, wait a second. No, he didn't move last round. I could allocate no eyes and then it's more likely that... Um, he doesn't get revealed on his second move, and thus uh, I threaten cruel weather. So that's my thinking. I allocate zero eyes, and um, I roll two more, which is a little more than I want. And he gets this beautiful roll of five movement. So there's no chance of me stalling him with cruel weather um, unless he chooses to move only twice. I doubt that he will do that. Um and he knows that Day Without Dawn is gone, so now he can take his time on these Wills of the West. So he moves once and is safe. And then I play Black Captain Commands to get into position to take out Woodland Realm. Let's see how this combat goes. I swarm with bats, the confusion. I roll two ones, so I'm happy to have played the bats, and I say nice bats. And, uh, and he gets uh, one hit against me. And, uh, and I get, I get one hit against him. So I'm going to be taking this battle slow. I'm going to be cycling a bunch of cards and, uh, just hope to whittle down that army. He has nine hit points in there and I had 15 hit points, which is good. And I can take it eventually, but, um, I need to be at least somewhat cautious. So I'm okay. Cycling character cards. Okay. Cycling, um, strategy cards, to hopefully get to Corsairs because he has not yet mustered up in Gondor. Oh, and the other thing, if you look at the force pool, the elven force pool has no, um, and I should have called this out in the Battle of Lorien, um, the elven force pool it has nothing left because in the Battle of Lorien, he reduced uh, elites into regulars, which pulled them out of the force pool instead of casualties because there were no elven casualties at that point. And um, and then he mustered the final elite uh, into Woodland Realm, which I think is correct to defend where I'm attacking. Uh, but it does leave uh, Rivendell uh, vulnerable. 
Now, because the North is at war, this unit from North Downs can eventually march into Rivendell and help defend it. <coughs> Excuse me. And also, Power Too Great has not been played yet. So there are some ways to, to delay Shadow. And, and I'm really kicking myself on the New Powers Rising because with New Powers Rising, I would have a nice force in North Dunlin and South Dunlin and could march to uh, Rivendell relatively quickly. So, um, but I, that's how it goes. All right. In any case, um, he moved a second time for the hunt. He got hit and in this case did not get revealed. And I would say he was probably hoping to get revealed. It might've been nice for him. Um, because that way when he, uh, he, he has no risk of, um, cruel weather, but this way by not getting revealed, he is at risk of cruel weather. I will say, um, having drawn the three, it is perhaps nice that he did not play Horn of Gondor because now these two zero, um, zero reveals will not actually reveal him because Gondor is, uh, because, uh, Gollum is guide. So I, you know, maybe there's some argument there to have not played, um, Horn of Gondor if you're anticipating getting exactly the three in this situation. So that's, that's kind of cool. Um, I draw a strategy card because I want to cycle into Corsairs. What else am I going to play? I could play Deadly Strife, um, but uh, I want to see what I get. And I don't really have any other character card, any other card that I'm going to play other than Ring is Mine. Uh, but, you know, Crew Weather isn't useful anymore. I, I'm going to say Breaking of the Fellowship until he's revealed as Gollum. So, um, all right, so I move. Or he moves a third time right away. He's just like, I I'm moving. <laughs> don't, don't even. Let's not even mess around. I know that I'm going to move. I and I want to see what happens to be able to um, uh, proceed from there. So uh, I do hit him here, uh, which I had a 75 percent chance of doing, and then um, he is not revealed. So that is. I think, I think nice for him. Uh, I don't think he wants to get revealed at this point. Um, there's a slight timing issue of me being able to play, uh, of him being able to play Mithril Coat and Sting this round. We'll see what happens. So um, I play strategy card here. Deadly Strife against Shield Wall. I get five hits. He gets only two hits. So uh, the shield wall does protect, but he takes four. And now, and now that the battle has swung so far in my my favor, he still has four hit points. But I have, um, what do I have? I still have twelve. So now I'm at triple his hit points, and now I'm willing to press a little. I lost an elite because I'm setting myself up to play an effective great host, unlike the ineffective great host that I played in Erebor. So, um, so I play Crew Weather. Um, why do I play Crew Weather here? I guess I just want to take out. I want to take out Woodland Realm without messing around too much. Um, and I do get three hits there, so the Crew Weather definitely helped. And I guess I'm like I'm gonna end up discarding cards anyway, so I might as well play one. I guess is my thinking. He gets two hits back against me. And um, is happy to see me play Crow Weather because it means he made the right choice to move an extra time. And though ooh, I think it was right either way. And uh, I press and uh, we don't play cards. I could guarantee the win with Stormcrow, but I'd rather save that for another combat where it matters more. And I get my hit. So I'm left over with eight hit points because that battle went so well. And I now have a total of seven, seven victory points. I need to figure out a way to get um, three more. So I have two rings and um, he he hit now gets Gondor to war, anticipating the possibility of Corsairs. If I had Corsairs, I could play it right now. I still haven't cycled into it. I had slightly better than 50% chance by this point, but um, it's reasonable that I don't have it. And, um, and now... Um, I muster an elite in Mount Gundabad. 
what the heck? Um, so it's getting, it's getting a little late and we need to play quickly. What would you do here? I have no idea if that is the right play. Um, what, what do you do as shadow here to win the game by the end of next round? It's, it's, I think quite unlikely that he'll be able to destroy the ring in one round. It's, it's possible, uh, but unlikely. So if your plan is I need to get three victory points, by the end of next round, what what do you do? How do you do it? Um, take a moment, pause the video. Tell me what you would do in the comments, please. So what my plan is, what my thinking is, is I'm going to take out Rivendell, which he has basically no way of defending. And I'm going to take out um, Pilar Gear, which I think will be relatively hard for him to defend. Um, so is that the right choice? I don't know. Going after four cities isn't that easy because uh, it's not that easy for me to take Edoras where my armies are right now. So, so that's my thinking. R uh, Rivendell is actually quite an easy target. I could have mustered up in North Dunland, but my thinking is if I merge Mount Gundabad, Carrick, and Woodland Realm, I can actually go and take out, um, I can go and take out Rivendell. So I don't know if this is best, but it was fun to march an elephant uh, from South Rune to, to Rivendell. So that's my plan. What I'm going to do by the end of this round, so I, I move my armies around exactly as I planned. He drew a strategy card, and then uh, I've now merged up my army in Carrick. And um, he draws a strategy card, I mean a character card, uh, which I think is good. It's a little interesting to me, why why draw a strategy card if not, uh, you know, why not just draw a character card again? But I guess he's like, uh, I'm, I'm doing fine militarily or there's not that much I can help with militarily. Um, I wonder, could he have just moved armies and gotten North Downs to Edmores to Trollshaws? I don't remember exactly what he did with the with the Wills of the West. Okay. Um, and now I decide to use a ring because I have enough rings. Um, I don't have anything that I'm like really need to play urgently. I could play the ring is mine. It's a little weird that I'm not playing this knowing that he's going to go into Mordor and move right away. But um, my thinking is I just need to maximize my chances of getting to Rivendell and taking it out. Um, and I have useless cards anyway. The Devilry of Orthanc with the uh, uh, Threats and Promises is not really useful. Denethor's Folly is potentially useful, not because I'm going to attack Minas Tirith, but if he plays Power Too Great next round, I want to have an army card. Specifically, it has to have the army symbol to be able to take out, um, get rid of uh, New Powers Rising. So my thinking is, let's keep moving armies around. Um, I move from Umbar to... West Terondor, so I can prepare to take out Pilar gear before he has a chance to reinforce it too much. Um, and I need, um, let's count the number of attacks I need. I, I need one attack into Pilar gear. I need Goblin's Gate, High Pass, Fords of Bruinen, Rivendell, and then Rivendell again. And I, I'm almost sure, right, that this army in Old Ford right now is going to be able to take out Rivendell in one action. So one, two, three, four, five to take out Rivendell six to take out Pilar gear. So I need, I need six attacks. I need to roll five. I have nine dice. I'm going to be rolling eight of them. So I need five attacks on eight dice. It's a little low, a little higher than what we'd expect. Um, but if I roll two musters, I can turn those into an attack with the, um, with the mouth of Sauron. And I do have a ring. So you know, this is a situation where if long ago I had saved Swarm of Bats, uh, the shadow is moving, it would give me one extra movement that I need, potentially, depending on how many attacks I roll next round, to get this army into position, turning a Palantir effectively into an attack or army movement die. So, <clears throat> um, I don't know. I also think I had a slight misplay where I could have, uh, given the number of army movements I had, maybe I could have gotten an army in North Dunland um, 
to Trollshaws or to, uh, sorry, to Fords of Bruin in and met up there. Instead of mustering in Mount Gundabad, I could have mustered in North Dunland. I would have had two fewer regulars because I wouldn't have gotten the, the units from Mount, Mount Gundabad, but I would have landed a unit um, in Fords of Bruin in, And then if I had drawn Shadow Lengthens, which I have not seen yet and have a chance to, then that could really help me reach um, Rivendell next round. So who knows exactly what I'm going to um, roll next round, but what would you have done? What would you set up for? Maybe this army just goes into Dol Amroth and tries to take it out and then comes and then like loops back to take out Pilar gear or I, or I use minus Morgul army to, to try and hold Pilar gear. I don't know. Um, so that was my plan. I felt like this was a, a very difficult way for uh, free people to defend. It would this would be a hard a hard thing for free people to defend against. So he drew. Um, There's another way, which is excellent for speedy uh, fellowship movement, and um, obviously gets rid of wizard snaff. What do you get rid of here? Um, I think I just get rid of threats and promises. Yeah, that's pretty straightforward. And um, I allocate one eye. There's one blue tile in there. I allocate one eye, and then I roll four more, and I only get um, four attacks. So that's exactly what we would expect. Um, that's average. Um, so it's not unfair in any way. But um, would have been nice to get five attacks. Five attacks. And, and really, um, five attacks plus not an eye. So that I could then use the, the ring that I've been saving to um, make that sixth attack. So if I had rolled slightly differently, then I would have been able to um, to win this round. But now I know, basically I can't win this round. Maybe, let's see what his role is. So he gets a fairly average role. We'd expect um, three movement, that's what he gets. Um, the eyes now are potentially a little scary um, for him. They do four damage. He's okay on corruption, um, but uh, you know, if you hit an eye, that, that can that can change things pretty quickly. And I have not played a lot of um, fellowship damaging cards, so um, he starts by playing Mithra Coat and Sting. Obviously, the best, uh, really the best card you can have in um, in Mordor. And uh, and then I, seeing that I'm not going to be able to win this round, uh, I get the ring as mine into the hunt pool. So now that there are five eyes in a hunt pool of uh, 12. So five out of 12 chance of drawing an eye. This is a actually a pretty unpleasant hunt pool when there are four eyes. So he um, plays there's another way here. I wonder, I, I wonder, since you're probably not going to move a huge number of times this round or, you know, at most twice, uh, probably I wouldn't, I, I think if I move twice successfully without getting revealed or anything, I don't know that I would risk the third movement. Um, or if I did, then yeah, that's, that's probably okay. Uh, I think I might've been tempted to play Smeagol helps nice master instead of there's another way. Um, just to get that into the pool before I start moving up and there's only 12 tiles in there. So my chances of drawing that at some point during this run are, are, are decent particularly with Mithril Coat and Sting, to be able to get rid of the red tile or redraw the red tile. So um, it's not it's not crazy here. It's certainly not crazy to play this, but I, I like getting Smeagol nice, Helps Nice Master in the pool first. Okay, if you think you have enough military time, and we can see that that free people are, I mean, that uh, the Shadow is not going to win militarily this round. So, so sort of as free people, I'm thinking, okay, I need to destroy the ring next round. Yeah, all right. Anyway, we start off with an eye. So what do you do here as uh, as free people? Do you use Mithril Coat and Sting? Or do you um, eat four Corruption and a Reveal? Note that with There's Another Way, when you play it, the, the die does not go into the hunt box, which is significant because if he moves again later this round, then the, the value of the eyes will not have increased because of this first move. In any case, um, he decides to use Mithril Coat and Sting. It's a little risky because there's a, you know, a chance that you're redrawing into the red eye, which is way worse. Um, but quite a few tiles are better. So um, certainly uh, there's, there are seven tiles that are better 
three tiles that are the same and one tile that's worse. So, all right, um, he gets the blue tile. So that's that's beautiful. You know, that's a really nice Mithra coat and sting. Uh, and I, you know, I, that's just cool that that happened. So he really planned for that. Well, he also, uh, I didn't specifically acknowledge this, but he waited to play Mithra coat and sting until it was completely safe from Nazgul strike. Uh, until he was actually in in Mordor, so that was uh, that was cleverly played. All right, so um, what just happened? It looks like the zero just went back into the pool. Whoa. Okay, so that was an error. The zero, uh, the zero el elven rope certainly should have gone, um, gone into removed, um, or gone into used. Really, is where it should have gone. But we somehow put it back in the pool. Um, okay, well that's fine. Uh, if we draw it again, then we'll obviously notice it. So uh, I attack into Pilar gear now because I don't want him to reinforce it. Maybe it's the wrong order because this lets him start mustering Gondor. Um, so yeah, probably, that's probably wrong because now Gondor is at war. Or was Gondor already at war? Am I, am I missing that? Yeah, so never mind. So Gondor is already at war. So yes, yeah, so that's why I attacked into Pilar gear because I didn't want him mustering more there. All right, he um, moves the Fellowship again and gets a one, very pleasant. So that's nice. And he has the option to reveal, uh, to reduce it, but he's more in a hurry, so he doesn't. And um, and then I get the Mouth of Sauron because uh, I, I know that I can use my ring next round and um, I don't think he's giving me a ring this round. And I want to uh, get the extra dice. If corruption goes well, I want to have more eyes in the pool. If corruption doesn't go well, I want to have uh, make sure I can win the military game next round um, and hope that he just doesn't roll enough movement. He moves again, and now he gets another eye. So there there are um, five eyes in the pool. So that is quite a few, and it's not it's certainly not crazy that he, that he draws another one here. Um, and that's five in reveal. That puts him up to... Um, six corruption and um, and then I go ahead and play Breaking the Fellowship to do one more and my thinking is next round he's going to have to move twice there are um, there are four eye tiles in the pool I would like to make sure that on his second move the eye tiles are deadly if I happen to roll enough um, enough eyes, and I do have this ring again to put uh, to put another eye into the pool if I need to, so um, that's my thinking. I my I anticipate that um, next round I I'm going to move uh, to Goblin's Gate this round, and so I need one, two, three, four attacks next round to be able to take out um, Rivendell, and I have the Mouth of Sauron. So I'm thinking, and I have a ring if I need it. So I'm thinking, okay, I should be able to take out Rivendell. Uh, I'm carefully holding a character card and a army card that I can use to get rid of new powers rising if he plays it. So, all right. Um, he hides the fellowship, which is obviously correct. I move armies around and I um, and I move this army from uh, Minus Morgul to South Athelion with the Mouth of Sauron so that uh, I can reinforce Pilar gear in case it comes down to that, which... Seems like there's certainly a chance that Aragorn's going to come out and do it. I don't know why I left a regular in Minus Morgul. That's probably a mistake. I think if he somehow... I mean, there would have to be a crazy, crazy roll for him to get a military victory without me also getting a military victory. So I think that's probably a minor inaccuracy. And then he musters in Minas Tirith, which is obviously correct. And um, I get Lidless Eye, which I'm actually quite happy to see. Because if I roll very low on eyes, then at least I can use Lidless Eye to um, make um, make those eye tiles in the pool deadly. So I allocate one eye and I roll three more again. So and I get um, five attacks plus a muster. So this is effectively six attacks. So so this is a great roll for me. I am going to be able to 
uh, take out Rivendell and uh, hold Pilar gear. And uh, let's see what he rolls. So he rolls um, three movement and he still has a ring. So totally fair. He should expect to get three movement. And um, and now he um, plays Challenge of the King. So that's a really interesting choice. He had just drawn it. Is it worth playing? There are... Um, There are four eyes in there, including the red eye. And there are only 10 tiles. So he has a good chance of taking out some eyes. And uh, and the eyes are pretty darn deadly right now. So he draws an eye, uh, a zero, and then an eye. So, um, you know, that's awesome. That's just really cool card play. And, um, and I will say, looking at this now... Um, he had a slightly it modified the odds slightly that this um that this zero was in there which it should not be but uh it doesn't really matter because if he had drawn it i think we would have remembered like how did you draw another zero um okay so he just got rid of two eyes and now i'm feeling much worse um so, yeah, that's just bad news. Um, I think for a moment, I say I said, like, that was a beautiful challenge. And he said, uh, red eye would have been better. I was like, what? You're criticizing Aragorn? Like, Aragorn just like totally did an epic challenge and uh, got rid of two four reveal eyes. Um, really nice. I'm like, yeah, way to go, Aragorn. Come on. I respect to Aragorn on that one. Um Okay, and now I make a mistake. So um, he is at six. He has six corruption. He's right. He's sitting at seven. Oh, sorry. He's at seven corruption. One, two, one, two, three, four, five corruption will kill him. And um, this hunt pool has two dead, two eyes, and everything else basically is totally fine for him. If he moves once and then hits an eye, then um, then that will kill him. But if he moves next action, which he certainly could, and draws an eye, it will not kill him. It will go, he'll go to 11. And I do not have anything in my hand that deals an extra point of corruption. So it would have been much smarter to um, use my ring to turn one of my dice into an eye. Because then there would be five eyes in there. And if he moves and hits an eye, it then is deadly on the first try. So, um... You know, it's not great that there's only uh, two out of eight tiles that hurt him. And he does have to pull twice. So that's something. Um, but two out of eight tiles. But but right now there's only one out of eight tiles that, that really is dangerous for him, which is the, which is the red eye. Um, so that was a mistake. Because what did we agree on? We said, I only need uh, one, two, three... Uh, I need one, two, three, four attacks into Rivendell. Maybe a fifth die to get rid of power too great if he drew it. So I do need to save. Um, I do need to save that. But uh, five dice are enough. So I, I don't need six dice. All right. I, I bring the mouth of Sauron down and, uh, and then he moves. And uh, he gets the, uh, the red eye. So obviously that's quite lucky for me. That's one in eight chance. And uh, if he had if he had drawn the regular eye, I would have put him to eleven. But then he could have hid. And then he could have moved with his with his final elven ring, and the zero, the one, the one, the zero, the zero would have been fine for him. And only two tiles, uh, the this red eye and, uh, I guess three tile. Uh, sorry, two tiles, the red eye and the three in the hypothetical case that he drew the regular eye right now instead of the red eye. So, uh, you know, I think he played really well. This was obviously bad, bad luck on this, on this Mordor run. Um, we figured that um, he actually managed to draw, I think five eye tiles uh, up the Mordor track. Two of them were Challenge of the King and one of them was redraw redrawn with Mithril Coat. 
But um, that's a lot of eyes in Mordor. And the hunt pool wasn't that small. Um, so the fact that the other blue tile was in there didn't end up mattering because we never drew it. So um, so that's fine. And, and now we stopped. And so obviously 11 corruption, good for me. But uh, I'm just planning on winning the military battle. So uh, I proceed to Rivendell. He musters in Minas Tirith. I attack, uh, I proceed to Rivendell again. He moves everybody and leaves one person behind in Minas Tirith. If he didn't leave somebody behind in Minas Tirith, I could go attack it. Um, and I thought about getting the Mouth of Sauron into Pilar gear, but I, um, I didn't, uh, I didn't want to waste the one hit point that would have, uh, gone away. So that, that was my thinking there. Um, and uh, now I use the Mouth of Sauron now to attack into Rivendell in case, I don't know, somehow the Mouth of Sauron dies. Um, though I don't, I don't think it would. I use the Onslaught for this battle because I anticipate using um, these other cards in the forthcoming uh, Pilar Gear battle. And uh, I just, I roll two hits. Uh, he gets two hits back at me, but then I just spend four, uh, four hit points and I get three hits. So um, that's the end of Rivendell. Not not much that Rivendell could do. Um, I don't recall the last time I played a game where I saw uh, units from South Rune march all the way uh, backwards over the high pass uh, to Rivendell. So that was that was kind of fun. Um, whether it was the most efficient, I don't know. Uh, I redraw finally into Corsairs, but uh, too little, too late. And um, and then he attacks into Pilar Gear which we can anticipate because if he had waited, then I would have had the chance to use my ring to uh, move Nazgul around. And so it's absolutely right for him to make this attack now. Um, what, uh, what combat card do you play seeing that he played a strategy card? So he's played a strategy card. I don't know. Uh, I ended up playing uh, Deadly Strife. I don't know if that's right or not. I don't have any leadership. I mostly think that those units in Pilargi are pretty uh, um, disposable. I want to save the two elites and retreat into, eventually retreat into um, West Herondor and then attack back with leadership. Um, but maybe this was the wrong play. Uh, I don't really know, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Um he gets uh, five hits against me because of the Valor. Um, and I get four hits back at him. So it's a, I think it was a little risky. Uh, you know, I think it played out okay for me, but um, that's something. All right, so he presses, I stay, and uh, he charges quite effectively, gets one hit, and now um, he gets four hits against me which is pretty nice. And uh, I only get one hit back at him. So I have a single elephant left. He presses and uh, and then I retreat. So now I wanted, I have two dice left. I wanted to move my leadership and then attack into Pilar gear. But I think that the extra three leadership, even considering the ability to turn on words of power um, and black breath, I think that it's not worth it to let him muster a whole uh, elite in Pilar gear. Um, right. He still has an elite left. So, uh, I just attack right away and I have 10 hit points to his five. So yeah. Um, I start by playing great host because this is the moment where I'm going to have the most, um, hit points. I hope that he just doesn't do too much damage to me or I manage to do some damage to him. Uh, and I managed to roll two sixes. So that's that's quite good. He gets three hits against me, which is, I think, about what we'd expect. Um, and three hits would have been enough to uh, turn off Great Host again, but but I managed to roll two sixes on, on seven dice. So that was a little lucky for me. Um, I've been a little risky with my Great Host plays uh, this round, this game. So uh, now I have seven hit points to his two, even with Aragorn, that's going to be uh, pretty tough. Um, I play Desperate Battle and uh, get the last two hit points. 
Um, so uh, Aragorn falls. He really did his best. I mean, good try, Aragorn. Challenge the king. I will go alone. Othalos. Aragorn did a lot of cool things. Um, Rohan just really didn't do anything. And uh, yeah, interesting game. So let's look at the uh, statistics. Uh, you can see that uh, in the end, I was I was plus four on sixes. He was pretty high on hits also, and had nice movement. Um, and I had I had nice um, decent army stuff. Um, I was high on eyes, but I don't know that I minded that. I think that was probably good for me in Mordor. Um, well, that's not entirely true because I could have won last turn if I had had more attack, more attacks. So, um, yeah, the eyes probably, probably just balanced out. Um, that was the game. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, sorry that I eliminated you from the, uh, league championship tournament, um, starter six, five, six, but it was a good game, really well played. And, uh, I look forward to, uh, another game or more games in the future. And uh, if you haven't checked out uh, Strider656's YouTube channel, please check it out. I'm sure you'd appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to continuing to show you games in the League Championship. Have a good rest of the day.